welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the Carnival Cruise Ship Sermon. 30 minute sermon, but it could be 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. This message um, that I'm getting ready to do, as I was preparing for this, and you may hear noise in the background. If you do, I am on a cruise ship. <laughs> so that's to be expected. Okay. So the title of this message is going to be, Where Are We and Where Are We Going? This is going to be a two-part message, um, this part now and then another part at a different time because it is so much information and it is so juicy with knowledge or so jam-packed with knowledge that um, I definitely don't want to jam it all into um, one teaching. So... As I said, the name of the message is, Where Are We and Where Are We Going? So, who believes that we're living in the last days? Okay, <laughs> all right, so, so we're all on the same page. Also, if you hear people laughing in the background, I am not all alone back there. There's people back there. So, if you hear people laughing, that's people that aren't with us. Okay, so... The Sermon on the Mount was one of the most powerful sermons ever preached because it was preached by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as I was preparing for this message, this is what came up that the Holy Spirit led me to teach on. So let me start at... Okay, so this is going to be Matthew 24. And I'm going to start at verse... I'm going to start at 3, and I'll tell you where I'm going to read down to. So Matthew 24, 3. And if you have your Bibles, feel free to take them out and read along, or your app on your phone. And let me start with a prayer before we go into God's Word. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in so that He can interpret the Scripture the way that He originally intended for it to be um, taught. So, Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day. It is a beautiful day on the sea, um, and we are just so grateful to be on this side of eternity in the land of the living and knowing you as our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, and God as our Father and Creator of all things. Forever we are grateful for everything that you have given to us, all of the blessings, all of the love, all of the favor, all of your grace, all of your mercy. We ask for more grace and more mercy, especially in these last days, Lord. Continue to give us wisdom and discernment and understanding but also remind us that we aren't to lean on anything that we have no, no not our own understanding not our own knowledge not our own wisdom and not our own strength let us depend on you for everything even the very air that we breathe help us to not be deceived in these last days lord but help us to watch and to pray so that we are fully aware of what's happening holy spirit let us constantly depend on you every single moment of every single day so that we will not be taken advantage of and that we will not go astray. Keep us on the narrow path. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Okay, so now, Matthew uh, 3, I'm going to start there. And as he, and this is Jesus talking, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Oh, 
okay. Ooh, this is so full of so much stuff. Good stuff. Okay. So we're just going to take this verse by verse, okay? I'm going to try to keep it 30, 45 minutes long, but we're going to let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit does, okay? So some of the warnings that Jesus gave for us to be aware of, alert of, and to be on the lookout for um, as human history wraps up as we know it. Um, we are most certainly in the last days. We have been in the last days for the last 2,000 years. Ever since Jesus ascended, um, we have been in the last days waiting on the return of our Lord and Savior. And oh, hallelujah, how we cannot wait until he comes back. But we have work to do in the meantime. So not rushing it, even though some days I'd be like, Lord, please, please come back and get your children. I'm like a, a orphan sitting on the side of the road. Well, not even an orphan because I got a father. <laughs> but just sitting on the side of the stoop like, you know, like this. Just, just waiting. <laughs> just waiting for him to come back and get us. But we know that his promises are true. His promises are yes and amen. So we know that he's coming back. We just don't know when. Eh. That's the joy. It could be any moment, any day. But there are some things that he told us. Um, because he loves us so much, he didn't want us, you know, like he said, um, you know, he considers us friends because a master doesn't tell his servant all his business and all the, all the things. Um, but he considers us friends because he's told us these things um, and has revealed the mysteries of the kingdom to us. Some of the mysteries have been revealed and some of them have not. So what has been revealed, we take. What hasn't belongs to God. So let's take this step by step. So Matthew 24, let's start with, let's start with, um, verse six. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. There is so much deception going on right now. And this isn't new. None of, none of these warnings are new. They're just. Um, escalating like a woman in labor um, she starts out having contractions they're small they're you know kind of like eh, I'm okay I don't need to go to the hospital I'm fine I'm fine it's okay until the point that she's like screaming like the exorcist needing to go to the hospital to deliver this you know beautiful blessing of a child it's the same way there's always been deceit and deception there's always been rumors of wars and wars there's always been famines and pestilences and false prophets and false teaching those have always been even in the days that jesus walked this earth there were false teachers there were false prophets there were sorcerers magicians you know um deceivers people being deceived and those that were deceiving them um we know um from the story of joseph that there were famines we know from um the book of exodus um with egypt that uh you know there were um uh, pestilences so none of these things in themselves are new but jesus is just warning us that in the last days these are things that we need to be very, very aware of, and we need to be on guard, watch and pray, the Lord says, so that we aren't deceived when it comes to a lot of things that's going on right now. So when it comes to deceit and um, being deceived, we have got to stay in our word. Let me say that again to everybody in here. <laughs> we have got to stay in God's word. I'm going to tell y'all something. When I'm flipping through YouTube, because I don't have cable, cable stole enough money from me with the high prices years ago, I, I have YouTube now um, as my entertainment. And I'll, you know, just be going through um, different sermons and the different things that the algorithm will uh, try to feed me. And I come across so many false teachers and my heart breaks like I know the Lord does because you look out as the camera pans and it's an audience full of people full of people and they're clapping and they're just excited but every person in that audience not every person i won't you know make a general statement but the majority of the people in that audience are being deceived by the false teacher on stage there are so many false prophets that are out right now there are so many false teachers that have been out for years that are um, acclaimed that are famous that are ridiculously rich and they are deceiving many Jane. so I'm changing the angle of this because <laughs> I was tired of standing. Okay. So, let me make sure I got my phone. Okay. So, 
as I was saying, there are several, several false teachers and false prophets that are um, deceiving the masses right now. They twist scripture. They manipulate scripture to make it say whatever they want it to say. That's the thing about God's word. Even though there is a interpretation that is right, there's an interpretation of God's word that is um, the way that it was intended to be understood. There are teachers in the church that twist it so that it doesn't say what God meant for it to say. It doesn't have the meaning that the Holy Spirit of God meant for it to, um, a, the way for it to be interpreted. So if you're not reading God's word, if you're not asking the Holy Spirit, if you're not trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're not asking for the wisdom and the discernment to be able to understand what is going on and how to not be deceived, if you're not reading God's word for yourself and asking for interpretation of how to fully understand it because you have to have spiritual eyes to understand God's word. You have to know God to understand God's word. That's why there's so many people that spend their entire lives reading the Bible and they never fully come to understand what salvation truly is because they're depending on their own understanding. They're depending on their family traditions. They're, they're depending on, you know, a different God than the God of the Bible for salvation. And the Bible tells us that salvation comes only through Jesus Christ. So, if you're not reading your own Bible, if you're not asking for interpretation, if you're not staying close to Christ, then you can easily be deceived because you hear somebody quote scripture and you're like, oh, oh, they, they quote in scripture. They, they must really know what they're talking about. And then you go and read the scripture for yourself. And it's like, mm, I don't think that's what that meant. Prime example, uh, met somebody on, on this cruise ship and we were talking, you know, religion, even though I don't believe in religion, I believe in relationship, but we were talking and he was pulling scripture out. He was like, yeah, you know, the, the stories in the Bible are fairy tale. And I'm like, uh oh, like, <laughs> that's not a, that's not a word that we use for scripture. Fairy tale. Okay. Keep on going. Let's see where this is going. Um, and he was pulling scripture out and I'm like, sir, I'm going to need chapter and verse. Um, because I don't know what interpretation you're using, but that's not what that scripture means. So he pulled out chapter and verse. I'm reading. I'm getting revelation from the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's not that's not what that means at all. You know, so because he knew a little bit of scripture, because he was able to quote a little bit of scripture, it made it seem like he knew what he was talking about. And he didn't. So. um there's people in here now so where can i go where can i go there's nowhere else to go okay so being deceived one tip stay in god's word know god's word for yourself know the holy spirit will always walk you into all truth and that the deceit is going to be so clever which it already is because think about it we all fell for satan's tricks when we were in the world right <laughs> Every last one of us fell for all of his tricks, all of his deceit. We all fell for it. And it was very sly. You know, he made it seem like, oh, this is the best option. You're living your best life. You have freedom. You can do whatever it is that you want. If you want to rob a bank, if you want to murder people, if you want to be a whore, whatever. You want to have kids out of sight, wedlock, whatever. Whatever. You can do whatever it is you like. Whatever. And then you come to know Christ and you come to know the truth and walk in the light and you're like, wow, like I was deceived on a level that, you know, should be um, <laughs> should be illegal. Um, there should be criminal charges taken up against Satan for the way that he deceived me. Like it should be illegal. And it is. There's a legal process that's going to happen at the end of time. And Satan will pay for everything that he has done and he will spend eternity in hell. So we won't have to worry about him um, for a thousand years, but then for eternity. So hallelujah. We're looking forward to that. So read God's word, stay in God's word, be surrounded by sound doctrine, go to a church of sound doctrine. If your pastor is doing a lot of talking about money and wealth and, you know, God wants to heal everybody. Yeah, he wants to heal everybody spiritually, but everybody is not going to be healed um, uh, physically. There are people that knew the Lord, that trusted in the Lord, that had faith, that believed in God, and they still died. They still died from cancer. They still died from COVID. They still died from a heart attack. Didn't mean that God loved them in 
any less. Didn't mean that um, that they didn't have the faith to be able to be healed, but God calls those home at the time that he desires to call us home. He, he gave us life, he can take it. He breathed life into us, he can stop that breath from being put in us from his lungs and take us home. And I just saw a, um, in my Bible today, uh, even though I don't have really good reception on this cruise ship, the verse that came up of the day was Psalms 116, 15, and it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So God does not delight when his saints die. He does not delight in, um, you know, us passing away. Of course, it's a joyous moment because we get to be with him for eternity, but it's not something that he delights in, you know, and he, he desires to heal all of us. Wouldn't that be great? Physically, you know, I have health issues and, uh, well, I don't like to call them issues and challenges. And, uh, you know, I, I've been praying for my healing. I have other saints praying for my healing and I'm not healed yet, but I have faith that, you know, God is either going to heal me physically here or he's going to heal me physically in my glorified body and either way spiritually it is well with my soul so you know this body was made to, to to break down um but as long as i'm still able to do the work for the kingdom and the work of my father and be about his business that's all that matters so those are a few tips when it comes to the deceit part you know false doctrine twisting of scripture prosperity gospel oh the lord wants everybody to be rich everybody gonna be rich you give me a thousand dollars you're gonna be rich no no, it's a it's a whole bunch of it's a whole bunch of us that trust in the Lord that we're we're making it. Like you know, I'm financially secure. My bills paid. I have a little bit of extra. Some of us are financially wealthy um, because we know where the wealth comes from. Comes from. We're trusting in the Lord um, for everything that we have. Um, but He never, the Lord never promised us that we would be rich in in monetary and in, in earthly money in in earthly wealth. But we have an inheritance that trumps any amount of money any amount of riches and wealth that this earth can offer so I'd rather wait for that inheritance because I know that one is um, imperishable it won't be burned up it won't catch fire no thieves can break in no moms can get it so hallelujah for that so let's move on to wars and rumors of wars so I know a lot of y'all have been watching the news and we know that there are wars going on right now in um, in Israel um, and Gaza and you know Afghanistan just had some floods like it's a lot going on and we pray for Israel and we also pray for Gaza we are believers in Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is yes the father is a god of war but there's also a time for war and there's a time for peace and we're supposed to pray for everybody so I have seen a divide same way with politics you know between Republican and Democrat how that happened and it it, it separated the goats from the uh the wheat from the tares goat from the sheep it's the same way with this thing about you know israel oh well you know those aren't god's chosen people those are the fake israel lights so we're not gonna pray for them that's not of god that you know well gaza they came against the children of israel we're not gonna pray for them that's not of god we pray for all souls to be saved because just like the people of Israel, if those are God's chosen people in, in, the, in who they are now, if they are God's chosen people, then we pray for them as well. Yeah, so I had to change locations again. Uh, so we will go ahead and finish. Let me just pull the scripture up. And we're just, we, we don't have very much further to go. Okay, so wars and rumors of wars that's where I, I stopped at so we know what's going on in israel right now we know what's going on in gaza and we know that we have um had issues with china for years we have had issues with russia for years um, we have had issues with afghanistan for years so the wars and the rumors of wars once again nothing um under the sun is new or there's nothing new under the sun so it's not a surprise at all that um we're hearing of you know china partnering partnering with russia which builds them to be possibly stronger than the united states because most of us in here live in the United States, we think that we are the giant. And for a long time, we, we have been. I mean, our dollar has been the strongest. Our government um, system has been the strongest. Um, everything that came out of America had been the strongest for a while. But we are at a point now that the dollar is losing its um, uh, 
uh, value. America, with the last several presidents, uh, shows that we are not as strong as we once thought we are. And when you look at a actual map, not the map that we see, because that thing is so skewed, and I just found that out a few years ago, or maybe a year ago, but when you look at how small the United States is compared to the entire world, you're like, yeah, we're not, we're not. Even with people, I tell people all the time, you know, you go stand next to a UPS truck and you'll see how small you are. If you, like, we're on the ocean right now in the middle of, I don't even know where we are. I could look at the longitude and latitude, latitude, but we're in the middle of nowhere right now. And if you look over at that sea, you realize just how small you are. You know, so we're not, the United States is not as big as it is. I mean, somebody could send a nuke over here and tear up the entire 50 states, 51 states, however many states it is. So we need to always be aware of the, um, um, the wars and the rumors of wars, the possibility of there being a World War III, especially where we are now um, with everything going on over in the Middle East. And just always being aware, always praying for the military. Um, even on this cruise ship yesterday, they had a, um, a military appreciation dinner and I'll have to do a separate video for that um, and a different presentation because it was just, it was heartbreaking, but it was such a joy to see that these people risk their lives for us you know I mean of course Jesus did it in, in in a way he did it for everybody um even those that hated him but those that go into the military and fight and those that end up ultimately losing their lives losing their family losing their minds um to fight for the freedom of this country is just it's a blessing it truly is so um, i definitely always tell people pray 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 for those men and women in uniform pray for the um uh the paramedics and the EMTs and all the military branches. I didn't even know they had as many branches as they did, but God has told us that there is a time for war and there is a time for peace. And it just so happens that right now it is a time of war. And Jesus told us, just be aware of wars and rumors of wars. Famines, always famines going on somewhere. I mean, there's always some part of the earth that does not have food that is um, struggling to feed its citizens and, and children. Um, I don't know why famines happen. I don't know why, I know why there's evil on the earth and that's a whole nother presentation, but there are times where there will be an um, excess amount of food and there'll be times where there's not. Here in America, we waste so much food that it is it is astronomical and it is so um, disgusting um, the amount of food that we waste and that we have not found a secure way to be able to distribute the food that um, we have left over uh, so that it's not going to waste you know let it become fertilizer be able to turn it into something else have a donation center of some sort that you know restaurants can donate their their leftovers to daily and whatever time that is have people there or the next day that can take that food because the food is going to be thrown in the garbage and it is it is just such a waste that when the real famine when the real famine comes y'all we're not going to know how to deal like because we're so used to having excess if i want something cold i just go in my refrigerator if i want some food i can just call uber eats or postmates and a lot of us aren't fasting so fasting is a lifestyle we need to be fasting so that we can start to take control with the help of the holy spirit taking control over our bellies and let me make sure i'm recording okay uh, we all need to be fasting so that we can take um, um, uh, power and authority in the name of Jesus over our stomachs and our minds because there's going to come a day that you're not going to be able to open the refrigerator and just eat because you may be in a concentration camp or a FEMA camp of some sort. So we need to start disciplining ourselves as disciples of Christ to be able to fast on a regular basis as the spirit leads you um, so that we can start getting control over our stomachs and our relationship to food so that when the the toughest part of the tribulation comes whether we'll be here or not whether you believe in post-trib pre-trib pre uh, uh post mid or pre 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 mid or post <laughs> tribulation doesn't matter we need to be fasting because fasting kills this flesh and jesus told us that we need to be killing this flesh every day killing this flesh denying ourselves picking up our cross and following after him
and he also told his disciples um you know it's not when you it's not if you fast when you fast so that is a commandment of jesus to fast so when it comes to the famine that is going to come upon the land the lord has warned us just like he warned joseph um we know that it's coming we don't know when but we know that the possibility is always there and we need to start all right good afternoon ladies and gentlemen the announcement is for dining room stop only now we're gonna stop. Let me take this opportunity to thank you, each and every one of you, for a great job well done today. Okay, thank you, the staff. I may have picked the wrong place. You guys again. are so great. Yep. As a friendly reminder, that the dishes will be closed at night, five minutes time. Kindly, all the dirty dishes and all the dirty napkins out of the dining room at this time. Once again, another friendly reminder, as we are expecting bad weather, so all glasses cups and everything needs to be secured. Please kindly secure all of our material, especially the glasses. All the glasses we may put in the middle of the, of the table to avoid all the breakages that we have. Okay. So we most certainly... Once again, for all side job, please kindly do all the side job. Let me do all the proper closing so we can we'll be ready for the dinner service at this evening. Once again, guys, you did very well. Good job. So have a nice day. See you for tonight for dinner service. Yay. Okay, so as I said, um, we need to prepare for the famines. We need to prepare our stomachs, to discipline our bodies, to be ready to not eat for a day, two days, three days, four days, a week. I don't know how long the human body can go without food. I know that our Lord and Savior went uh, 40 days <laughs> without food, but when he finished that fast, scripture tells us he was hungry um and he was thirsty uh so we have to be able to um you know i'm not recommending anybody fast for 40 days without really going before the lord and making sure that that's what you're led to do but a one day fast a two day fast a three day fast a seven day fast a 21 day fast is is where we all need to be um trying you know we need to really be trying to work our way up to 40 but starting with one or two or three days and spending that time in the presence of the Lord, in prayer, in worship, in, in fellowship, corporate prayer, uh, wherever you feel led um, to be. But that time needs to be set apart and, and spent with the Lord. Now, I want to go back because there were some points that I wanted to make for um, the deceit part. There's a lot of people that are making up their own false gods. Um, we know as Christians, uh, disciples of Christ, followers of Christ, imitators of Christ, that there are many false gods that have um, popped up in the world. They have been there since the beginning of time because Satan had already known the plan that his head would be crushed um, by um, Jesus. So he had already started to make these false religions. And when you look at false religions, um, two things. One way to test the fruit of a religion a person so that you aren't deceived the bible tells us to test the fruit and in doing so we are able to and i want to say that's matthew 7 21 through 23 or first john i have it um, the Bible tells us to test the fruit so that you can know if it's of God. So the way that you test the fruit is if, if you know, you ask them, well, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus Christ? And based off of what they say, if they don't say that he's the son of God, then you know that you're not talking to someone who serves the one living true God. Um, so um, testing the spirit is First John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Another thing that I want to say about deceit, and deceit and deception could be a whole video in itself, really. It, it could be a whole presentation, a whole talk in itself. Um, stop searching after prophecy. You know, I, I know the Apostle Paul tells us that if any spiritual gift that we want to have, um, we should be asking for prophecy because it edifies the church. Stop so stop searching so hard for a prophet, for a prophetess to give you a word from the Lord. The same way that the Lord talks to them, he can talk to you. It may be different from the way that he gives messages to them because they are ordained and called to be prophets and pro a prophetess. But we have more prophets and prophetess right now than the whole Old Testament and New Testament put together. And that's not normal. I know in the last days that God said that he will pour his spirit upon, you know, all flesh that um, we'll have dreams and visions and um, uh, prophesy I know all of that I know that verse 
But at the same time, God's people perish because of lack of knowledge. You have to know God for yourself. You cannot like be sitting next to a Christian and be like, oh, I'm Christian because he's Christian or I'm Christian because she's Christian. You have to have your own relationship. And once we build that relationship, we start to know the voice of God. We start to know uh, what he's saying, what he desires from us. Should I go left? Should I go right? We start to have a um, beautiful fellowship with the Holy Spirit where we know where he's leading us, what he's telling us. And God will tell us things about the future. Does that make us a prophet or a prophetess? No, it may, it may not. God calls different people to different offices. But, uh, you know, it, within the last uh, maybe six months, I started prophesying and it's just such a blessing because it wasn't even a spiritual gift that I was like praying hard for. I had asked for whatever my spiritual gifts are. I would love to start working in them. Um, but even with me prophesying, you know, I'm not like, Lord, I'm going to be a prophetess. Hallelujah. Nah, nah. You know, I'm just happy to be able to give a word of knowledge, to be able to give a prophecy and then to watch it come to pass and God get all all the glory you know from that word being spoken because scripture tells us that god's word will not return back to him void so when i speak um prophetically uh which has only happened a few times um it has come to pass uh i think three of the four or five times so definitely don't be seeking after you know prophets and prophet prophet is because that's what ha that's what's happening when it comes to the deceit a lot of people are searching after prophecy and they're ending up at these conferences that are really witchcraft um, conferences and the fake prophets and prophetess are putting witchcraft on folks and they are asking them for money for them to be able to be blessed and the God that we serve that's not that's not how he operates you don't have to give him anything you put your faith in him your trust in him and he will bless you you don't have to give somebody money um, to be able to be blessed by God and that's another sign to not be deceived you know if somebody is asking Asking you for large amounts of money to get a blessing or to give you a word from the Lord that ain't that ain't of God that's not once you know God's character by staying in his word by staying close to him you know that you'll be able to see better what's real and what's not what's false and what's not but if you're not in your word and you're depending on other people's version of god or um, idea of god or personality and characteristics of god then whatever they tell you because you trust them over god himself you're going to fall for the okie doke and you're going to be deceived and you may not make it into heaven um you know because of that deceit because you didn't seek god for yourself he says seek first the kingdom of god abide in me and i abide in you you know seek me you know it's not seek him through somebody else so i just wanted to say go back and say that about the deceit as well and then also with you know the false jesus that is being perpetrated around the world and that has been a problem for a long time a way that you can look and see that a religion is false you can see that every religion in the world for the most part has jesus either by name by another name but the basic idea of jesus is in almost every religion doesn't that seem strange because when i read my my bible when i read my father's word i don't see the hindu gods listed by name i don't i don't see um christ consciousness i don't i don't see manifestation in the sense of me creating my own reality i don't see any of that i don't see the mormon god i don't see um the jehovah witness god i i don't i don't see you know i definitely don't see muhammad or allah i don't see any of those in god's word the real god <laughs> the true living god i don't see that but when you look at these other religions they they will have a jesus a jesus or they will have a jesus figure but the, the the way to eternal life through Jesus, the true Jesus, is always missing in the false Jesus. It's never it's never directly from the Bible. He's the truth, the way, the life. You know, he's the only way to the Father. Um, he's the atonement for our sins. It's never that. It's like, oh yeah, he was a great guy. He was a good prophet. Yeah, he was good. So that's another way that you can um, not be deceived in these last days. Um, just making sure that you understand who Jesus is, what salvation is, how salvation is um, given, how it is obtained, how it is kept, and how to um, truly know the, the God that you serve. Know him personally where nobody can tell you anything different. So I'll finish with the pestilences and offense. So the pestilences, um, we have pestilences going on all over the world. We have locust outbreaks in different places. Um, and of course that happened in 
where Egypt as well. Uh, we have birds, thousands and thousands of birds just dropping dead from the sky. We have fish that are um, coming up on the um, the shores of, of different cities, just thousands and thousands of fish dead. Um, we obviously have the uh, COZID, <laughs> uh, the COZID-9. Uh, we have um, the flu. We have all of these diseases and they're always in the lab. Make no mistake, they are always in the lab trying to create something to put out to kill more people. Um, they believe in population control. They believe in um, decreasing the population to try to get it down to where they feel it's reasonable. It's not up to them. But they are always in the lab working on something to decrease the population, to make people more sick. Um, you know, they have this cloned meat coming out. Um, and um, being on this cruise ship, you know, I, I've been telling people, you know, people that I, I came with, with, not just random strangers <laughs> like y'all but um you know i've told people like this would be the the great a, a great testing ground for that fake meat because they're feeding thousands and thousands of people a week and there's no label you know so don't necessarily think if somebody is trying to trick you that they're going to put a stamp of you know, this is a trick. I'm trying to trick you. I'm trying to deceive you. They're not necessarily going to put that sticker on it. A lot of deceit um, and deception is under the table. It's, it's, it's hidden in darkness. And we have to always ask for the Holy Spirit to shine his light, um, the, the marvelous light of Christ, into those dark places in this world so that it can be illuminated so that we can see what we're walking into um, and what is coming up. And you know? also we always ask for the Lord to reveal what's coming up in revelation and then the last thing is god talked about or jesus talked about offense everybody was going to be offended in the last days so let me pull that verse back up and then we'll end on that one and i'll pick this um message up later on when i have a different location okay so where did i put it uh, let me see that's my highlights okay uh, offensive many Okay, verse, what is this? Verse 10, 24, 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. So we live in a world right now that is weird. I mean, it's just it's just a weird time. You can't call, or people say you can't call her or her. You can't call he or he. You got to call her or they. You got to call him or we. I ain't doing none of that. If you appear to be a woman, naturally born a woman you're a she if you're born a man and you look like you were naturally born a man you're a man i'm not getting into satan's game i'm not playing that trick um you know of of being respectful i respect i respect my father in heaven who made you as the gender that he wanted to make you not this foolishness of being able to change your gender because if that's the case there's many things that we should be able to change about ourselves and identify as a dog or a cat or a bird or I should be able to identify as that cash register behind you and you can't tell me anything different according to this weird world that we live in so everybody is offended you can't say anything to anybody without somebody being offended I even struggle with the spirit of offense sometimes you know and the Lord is working on me with that because I know that most times the person that's delivering the message isn't delivering it to, to to be offensive but something within me that god is still working on uprooting out of me the holy spirit is helping me you know revealing those areas of me that still need work and offense sometimes comes up you know so we live in a world where you walk on eggshells because you don't want to hurt anybody you don't want to be offensive you don't want to be looked at as you know a bigot or hateful you know one of those type of christians but at the same time i stand on truth and even when i've been offended i've had to not only ask for forgiveness forgiveness for my attitude towards the offense and towards the offender I've had to go to the person that offended me and Matthew 18 that thing out you know Matthew 18 is a amazing um, uh, scripture that tells us how to handle conflict within the body of Christ and we try to do that at every chance that we get so that offense doesn't take a stronghold and become you know um, cause division and um, discord we don't want that in the body of Christ so everybody is offended and when you start saying the name of jesus you really see offense 
um, the name of Jesus, just his name can set the captives free. Just his name demons tremble. Just his name can cast out demons. Just his name can heal the sick. Just his name can give blind to the to the to, uh, can give blind to the blind. Just Jesus' name can give sight to the blind. You know, and give um, uh, working legs to someone that has been paralyzed their entire life. Um, give speech to the to the mute. So it's in his name that the power and authority exist. And some people are just just offended offended by the name of Jesus and I've seen that just you know when I went out and evangelized with my brothers and sisters just the the very name of Jesus if you say that I'm coming in the name of Jesus in Jesus name people get so offended and so angry because the the Satan that exists within them the Antichrist spirit that is attached to them hates the name of Jesus but we love the name of Jesus so we are always speaking his name we are always calling on him um, for help and God guidance and power and authority because it's in his name that we receive the power and authority not in the name of anybody else it's in the name of Jesus so I'm going to end there um, talking about where are we and where are we going um, this is part one this is where we are and then I will do a part two of where we are going so I pray that that has blessed you all and um Thank you for coming. Another um, exciting sermon on the Carnival Cruise. And I am glad to have been able to um, bless you. And I pray that this message was received with an open heart. And I pray that you go and read God's word for yourself. You know, read Matthew 24, the entire chapter, and you will have a better understanding of um, uh, what to be on the lookout for so that you know, more than anything, deception is the start of it all. Because if they can deceive you from the top level, then everything else is, is a piece of cake for them. So, all right. Thank y'all so much. God bless you.